On this episode of Local Brew, we're heading to the woods of Newcastle, Maine to visit one of Maine's premier breweries, Oxbow Brewing Company. There we'll talk with head brewmaster Mike Fava, where we'll get a tour of the farm and their beautiful brewery, where I'll help Mike brew a batch of their flagship beer, Farmhouse Pale Ale. And then we're heading to Portland to view their beautiful new tasting room, where I'll learn how they blend their beers and talk to the locals. All this and more on this episode of Local Brew. The craft beer scene in the United States is exploding with over 2,800 breweries. States like Vermont, Oregon, Colorado, and Maine are leading the way in this revolution. With over 50 licensed breweries brewing over 200 beers, Maine is a leader in the craft beer world. I'm Matt Delamater, and I love beer. I'm hitting the road to visit the best breweries in Maine and learn the story behind the brew. I'm going behind the scenes to discover who the brewers are, how their beer is made, and what drives them to create some of the best beer in the country. This is Local Brew. This episode of Local Brew is sponsored by the Maine Brew Bus, the official ride of Local Brew, driving you to drink local since 2012. The Great Lost Bear, Portland's original craft beer bar serving over 70 beers on tap daily. Norway Brewing Company is a family-owned tap room and brew pub off Route 26 in Norway, Maine. Take a left turn. Oxbow is an American farmhouse brewery specializing in traditional Belgian-style ales with contemporary American influence. They brew small batches of beer in a renovated barn in rural Newcastle, Maine. Their beers can be found in fine bars and restaurants throughout Maine, Vermont, Massachusetts, New York City, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., and throughout Europe, and even in Japan. I was going to meet Mike Fava, Oxbow's head brewer and first full-time hire. I was hoping to get a look at their farmhouse operation. He was just the guy to give me the rundown. What's up, man? Good to see you. Thanks for having us out, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming. So this is Oxbow Brewing Company in Newcastle, Maine. We drove on some beautiful, windy, lovely roads to get here, oh, and yeah. here we are. Out in beautiful farm country. Oh my gosh. Well, behind us, I see some tanks, and I see this beautiful facility, which we're going to check out today, but I want to see what else you got going on here. Can we take a walk? Can Absolutely. you give me a tour? 18 acres to explore. Let's go. All right. Let's do it. First stop on the tour of the farm was the farmhouse, which I learned held a lot of the brewery's history within its walls. This is beautiful. Nestled in the main woods with a wood stove, three bedrooms, and spare room for some decorative steins, it looked like more than a decent place to set up and put back a few. Wow, this is beautiful. Here we are. This is amazing. Yeah. So this is the original home that was here on the property before, when the brewery started. Absolutely, yes. And it was hand built um, from timber from this land by the original wow. owner. So is that the yep. same thing? With the brewery? Same with the brewery, same with the tasting room. You know, all, wow. the, all the wood you see was, was from this land. Wow. This is a legit farmhouse brewery experience. So this, this property is really kind of one, on the ground floor of, of Oxbow's early days. That's right. The, uh, the, one of the founders of Oxbow, this was his house with his family. The barn that we brew in now was the pilot system, little 10 gallon batches at a time. 10 gallon home, batches. Home brew, home brew style. And then that grew and blossomed into what Oxbow is today. So what is the property used for now? I mean, because it, in terms of it looks like a beautiful, you know, furnished apartment. Are people living here now? Or no? uh, well, luckily for us as brewers, we get to use this as a crash pad in between brews. Awesome. But then we rent it on Airbnb. So no kidding. fans of ours can come out here. This is so cool. And, yeah, it sleeps nine people comfortably. Nine people. Yep. It's well, the stumble day. home is, is easy. So yeah. that's good. So yeah. it's, good. it's an easy, easy stumble home for, after a few mm -hmm. beers. Did you ever stay here? Oh yeah, this was my bedroom for, here? for the first two years. Nice. Yep. This is amazing. Well, I think I think uh, you know when I'm gonna have a long day today. I might have to crash. You know? Hey, have look. some beers. It's it's you know don't drink and drive. That's the key thing. After fitting in my little public service announcement, it was time to move on. After all, 18 acres is a lot of ground to cover. The farm started right outside the back door. On the way up, Mike filled me in more of the timbering history of the homestead and how the wood from the land not only went in to build these buildings, but also went to shipbuilders on the coast, joining this specific plot with some deep main roots. That's amazing. So what do we, so we have, so we have the orchard here and then what's this little building right here? Oh, this is the chicken coop. Mike, look at them. We check it out? Is yeah, that cool? yeah. They won't just like freak out and fly away? Oh, they might. <laughs> Hey, right there. Oh. oh my goodness. You can see all the little chicks. They, they grow look. really fast. We just got these 
in about three weeks ago. Wow. We actually sell eggs in our tasting room that are laid right here on the property. No kidding. Can I pick one up? Oh, they're very friendly. You should. I figured if I was going to see how they lived here on the farm, I should probably dig right in. Oh, okay. Oh, you got to commit. All right, all right. I got one. I got one. They're I began small. to see how hands-on the farmhouse lifestyle really is, and catching that chicken was much easier than I thought it would be. I started to think maybe local brew TV could use a mascot. Can I take this one home? Ah, it's gonna bite me. There were probably some more interesting things on the farm. So around the chicken coop, we have some beautiful, gorgeous gardens happening. What do we got growing here? Yeah, the biggest thing we would concentrate on is growing fruit for use in our beer. So our raised beds here are strawberries. Nice. You see a lot of low brambles right now, or raspberries and blackberries. And then most of the trees are sour cherries. Sour cherries. Oh, it, Why sour cherries? It just gives a great flavor. The pits actually give a little hint of a cinnamon spice that might be in there, a little warming. Cinnamon spice in the pit? I didn't know that. Yep. That's fascinating. Yep. So you said you have this land, let's use it and let's make our own fruit. That's right. There was something very cool about the way that Oxbow was using its footprint on the land to create a very unique character for their beer. I guess that's one of the advantages of setting up a brewery in rural Maine. Couldn't wait to see what else they had. Uh, so in this back growth here, we have some little piglets we just got in. What do you use the pigs for? Oh, uh, well they help clear the land so we can grow more fruit trees and brambles. Right here? And, yep, we're gonna go right through here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Look at these little guys. Nice. It's actually one guy, two females, all from different litters because we're hoping they will procreate and give us more pigs in can, the future. Can we, can we go? Yeah, let's check all right. out. I thought you were gonna, I thought there was gonna be like giant hogs out here. This is awesome. I can deal with some piglets. So these are North American guinea hogs. It's actually the preferred breed of the American homesteader because they do say, stay a little on the smaller side, Hi. but they're very friendly. And their favorite food are roots, so they're great for clearing out uh, land, which is what we're doing here. We're hoping to expand our, our fruit production, and this will be a, a future grove. Probably in uh, two years from now, we'll come here and see more raspberries and cherry trees. And what we just walked through was all looked like this when we first started. Wow. Well, these guys are going to grow pretty big. Are they going to be mascots of Oxbow, or are we going to include them on the menu in, uh, in the tasting room? Might be a little bit of a mix, but there might be a beer dinner in their future. Might be as well. <laughs> a ticketed beer dinner. For, I love it. All right, we'll have to get on that short list. Can you pick them up? It helps if you bring food. Do pigs have teeth? Keeping things consistent, I thought I should yeah, definitely no, yeah. try and pick up a pig. Do you just be quick and jump on them? I went to the pig scramble when I was a kid, Mike. I don't think I was very good at it. Oh, you can't be quick like that. I'm going to be silent here. Guys, you want this? You want this leaf? I've cornered you. Screw the pigs. <laughs> that was a good attempt. I will return when you're bigger and slower. And there ended my short little stint <laughs> as a farmhand. The farm is getting the better of me. The next stop on the tour was for something that I knew I wasn't going to try and pick up. We have bees. Oh yeah, we have lots of bees. These bees are going to be cranking away. And then what will you do with the honey? And we'll get two harvests a year. Two from harvests? The, yep. Early season, so early mid-summer, we'll get a nice harvest from everything that they pollinated from the spring. So that first harvest is, is very light in color. It's a lot more floral. And then later in the fall, we'll get another harvest. And that honey is actually a little darker in color. Gotcha. Um, it's a little, slightly more earthy, a little bit more uh, of a typical honey flavor, a little less floral than the spring. So it's, it's pretty cool to see that, Amazing. That, that difference. So again, going with the farmhouse, you know, you, you, not only are you using the land to create fruit, you're allowing these bees to just kind of gobble up all that amazing natural you know, elements of the land and you're going to use that in the beer as well. Absolutely. Damn. So now are you, are you, are you donning the suit? Oh. You know that crazy beekeeper suit? I've, I mean, done, it, I've done it once, but I, I don't yeah. know all the intricacies of, of keeping a hive happy. We have a volunteer. Uh, she's actually a scientist um, oh, cool. in the area that takes it very seriously. She does not have the land to do it herself, so she volunteers her time to keep bees for us here. So you guys let her use the land, keep the bees, and you yep. use, the, use, use the fruits of her labor. Absolutely. It's amazing. Well, you know what? I, you know, I, I trust you on the, bee, on the bees, so I, I'm just gonna let them, let them be. Hey, you don't wanna hold one? I think I'm, not, I'm good. <laughs> I, think, I, I think I'm good. I mean, we've seen this beautiful, beautiful orchard 
and your animals and stuff, but this is like a tiny piece of this big, beautiful piece of land. I noticed some trails. Can we? Can you show me a little bit more about the property? Yeah, let's go. Let's can hit the trails. Oh, yep. let's hit the trails. I love it. Heading past the pig groves, we started on some of the wilderness trails out behind Oxbow. Not a bad place to clear the head. This is magical in here, Mike. I mean, this is in your backyard. Do you ever just come out here and hang out? Of late, I'm doing it more. These are all mountain bike trails. So that's what the flags were. That's what the we flags are for. Okay. We're working with the New England Mountain Bike Association, some volunteers okay. from them. They come out here. We did a big camp out and cleared out that's more of these trails that you see marked out. So, so do you ride? I try. I try. <laughs> I love it. I'm not jumping off ledges, but uh, a, nice, a nice ride through, I get the heart rate going. And there's 18 acres to explore, so they, it's really nonstop riding back here. So, you know, I'm looking at your logo, and I've always wondered, what, what's the owl? Oh, it's a barred owl, actually a resident barred owl that lives in these woods, starting the company, trying to think of a logo. It was almost like a spirit animal coming out of the trees one day. Our, our founder was walking around thinking of what, what the logo would be, and it was right in front of him, the barred okay. owl. There's a family that lives on, uh, on the property. So. Tell me about the name, too. What, what does Oxbow mean? Uh, Oxbow is a large omega-shaped bend in a river. Okay. So it really relates to our process of making beer, that we take the slow, meandering way around. We have a very long brew process compared to others. And the largest one in Maine is in the Dyer River, which is not even uh, a quarter mile up the road. So slow and steady is the slow way to and go. Steady. We're we don't, making good beer. We don't rush between two points. We take that meandering roundabout way. Well, it shows in the beer, brother. Yeah. Well, speaking of the beer, I. I don't want to get lost. Do you think you can take me back to the brewery? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's, can we go that? Don't go that way. Don't We're going to go, go this way. We're going to go this way. Okay. We're going to go this way. Don't let me lead. <laughs> then it was out of the woods and back towards the brewery, where we ran across yet another resource that Oxbow uses in their beer to set themselves apart from other brewers. So this is, this is the pond. So is this, is this where you get your water? Yeah, this pond is spring-fed, and that same spring feeds the well that we we're pulling the water for, for to make our beer. No kidding. But also, this pond is our hockey practice rink. Hockey? The, you play hockey on Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. And it's our swimming pool in the summer. On That's a hot a, brew day, take a just, quick dip. Mike explained that the character of the water used in brewing had such a huge effect on the beer. So we have this beautiful, beautiful spring water. comes from right under our brewery, and we don't have to treat our water and add different elements and minerals to it to make mm. it perfect brewing water, we're starting at, um, at a perfect place to, to make beer. So. What, what are the qualities that, that typically uh, make this water different? For our beer, it's, uh, it's super soft, it's especially in cities and municipal water, you're getting chlorines and fluorides. And gotcha. It's very hard water, really, really high level of calcium. But we're starting with super soft, delicious water that we don't treat because we want that to come through. You want the beer. elements that are already naturally there. You, you guys do events here, right? That's right. Yeah, our biggest one's called Goods from the Woods. I'm stopping it there because I couldn't pass up the chance to check out Oxbow's fifth annual Goods from the Woods and see what kind of scene those guys created up in Newcastle. There, I got to catch up with Oxbow founder, Tim Adams. The intention was to have it be an annual event. Yeah. You know, we've learned along the way and we've made some changes, but the concept has always been the same. It's uh, have people out to the woods, you know, to this beautiful land here and pour all of our best beers that we can, all the stuff we've been saving. Those guys did it right. They had food trucks, they had music, they were graffiti artists out, they had paddle boats. Yeah, we just wanted to, want to share it with people. You know, we get so much enjoyment out of this place and yeah. so much inspiration for our beers. So I feel like it's kind of an important thing to get as many people up here as we can and show them a good time. And yes, there were even hidden beers in the woods. Look at this. Just a little keg sitting in the end of a trail. Goods in the woods. Oxbow? Come on. Forget about it. I had been having an incredible day seeing how Oxbow tied their farmland into an attitude and a lifestyle. Now, it was time to see how they tied it into their work. But first, it's time for another round. The Maine Brew Bus, Maine's original brewery tour company, is a fun and unique way to visit craft breweries in Maine. Hop on board and experience our all-inclusive tours of Maine craft breweries, facilities, wineries, meaderies, and even coffee roasters. Leave the driving to us while you enjoy behind-the-scenes tours, local snacks, trivia, and of course, beer. Voted number one activity in Portland, Maine on TripAdvisor, the Maine Brew Bus is the best way to visit craft breweries in Maine. Check out our schedule and book your tickets now at themainbrewbus.com. The Maine Brew Bus, the official ride of Local Brew TV, driving you to drink local. 
So Mike, what are we what are we brewing today? Oh, today we'll be <laughs> brewing farmhouse pale ale. Farmhouse pale ale. Yep. FPA? That's the the, the, the FPA. famous FPA. Yeah, you might notice it around. I Maine. love it. It's an American saison. Yeah. So we use our house saison yeast, or that special farmhouse yeast. And you use this beautiful elements that you've just shown me here. Yep. Are you ready to get dirty? Let's get dirty. I love this. Farmhouse Pale Ale is Oxbow's crisp and dry flagship beer that clocks in at 6% ABV. The beer takes its influences from farmhouse beers of southern Belgium with Oxbow's own American twist. I couldn't wait to see behind the curtain on the making of this one. All right. So it looks like we're ready to rock and roll. We got all the grain ready to go. Okay. The biggest thing we have to do now is mix it with hot water and let it steep. And that's gonna convert all the starches of the grain into fermentable sugar. Perfect. Timing and temperature are very important right now. So you're saying don't screw it up. We that's can't it. mess it up. Okay, don't mess, I don't wanna mess it up. We'd been having some fun on the farm that morning, but I could see that when it came to brewing, this was serious business. And Oxbow's exacting attention to detail really started to show. This is step one. The clock doesn't start ticking until all this grain is in there. Till the mashing. Yep. And again, time and temperature are what we're looking at here. So the temperature at which this water is, it's gonna convert the starches to sugar in a different way. The hotter the water, it's gonna make really complex sugar. Okay. The, co the cooler the water, it's gonna make a very simple sugar. And we like our beer really dry. Okay. So we want a cooler temperature of that range. Okay. One degree different will make a different beer. So this is a very pivotal moment in the day. So yeah, let's get started. Under Mike's instruction, I started my work brewing farmhouse pale ale. And I started to understand Oxbow's slow and deliberate way. This was a fully manual process. There was no automation here. Now this wasn't my first brew day. But there was some serious heavy lifting going on here. All right, let's speed this along, Matt. I'll what do you mean? You. I'm not going fast enough? I'll I don't help, understand. I'll help you out. And how come you get to use a bucket? Keep stirring. Keep Jesus, stirring. Jesus. Remember we talked about the most pivotal part of I the know, day? I know. I know. It's lots of stirring. I think I started to get a hang up. of the equation. Lift, pour, stir. And you couldn't you stir enough. I guess you guys don't need gym memberships, right? Jesus. Even the frickin' paddle's heavy. My man. You did good. All right, I, I probably won't be sending in my application, but uh, that was, whew. Yeah, your brewer's a lot of work, man. Yeah. I'm gonna wear different clothes next time. So this, so this is it. This is the brewer house. This, this is, is the it. brewery that's been, and this has been the original space and the original brewery equipment? Exactly. We've uh, added a couple more tanks. Gotcha. Right now you'll see, uh, these are, this is our largest tank. It's a 30 barrel oh. fermenter. <laughs> It takes four brews on the brew house, four times what you just did to fill this. You'll notice the conical shaped bottom of the fermenter. That's a way for us to collect yeast. After the yeast has done its work and fermented the beer, it falls down into the cone and we're able to harvest it and reuse our yeast into the next batch of beer. And again, it's that Saison yeast. It's ravenous, it loves fermentable sugar and it ferments a beer to dryness, way more dry than most other Ale or and that dry yeast, quality, that dry element is really essential that's, in your beer. That is our calling card. We never say we make the best beer, but we always say we make the driest beer. Gotcha. And, and that clean water and that super beautiful, all those elements that you're pulling in from the, the different elements in the area in the farmhouse makes that beautiful. Exactly. So the beer is sitting in the, is there, is there any beer that I can, I can try? Yeah, so these two tanks are our bright tanks. We'll actually keg beer right out of these right, tanks. These, guys, that's, okay. that's, these are ready to be packaged. So soon we'll be kegging this farmhouse pale ale batch. So let's uh, let's taste some. See how, see right how it's from the doing. barrel? Right from the tank. Sure. All know. right. Nice. I don't think I've served myself. It here. comes out foamy because the tank is fully pressurized of and course, we're carbonating right. the beer right now. But it's this is a, the, it's just a giant big keg, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the uh, Freshest farmhouse pale ale you can get. I like that. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, man. Oh, that's fantastic. Super light. Is this this is the saison yeast? Yep, this is our house saison yeast. Oh, it imparts so a lot fresh. of the flavor, a lot of the esters and phenols you're getting. There's a little tropical fruit in there. There's a little yeah. spice hint. We're not using fruit or spice in, in this beer, but that yeast gives off those flavors. It somehow restores and records those, those flavors. Yep. That's fantastic. Yep. Now, not only do you make beer here, but you also do some blending as well. That's right. You're gonna show me how that happens down yep. there? Yep, so we take, a, we take the slow road here, uh, grain the glass for about five weeks. Yep. So the five beer we're weeks. making today, we'll be able to enjoy five weeks from now. No kidding. 
Um, but then anything that takes longer than that, a lot of our wild beer projects we do in Portland because we have a lot more space and we can take the time that it needs to allow those beers to fully develop. You guys take a little bit that Oxbow approach of you want to make sure that beer is right and you take the appropriate amount of time before it gets to the customer? Is that exactly, the top? exactly. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. All that small talk had me ready for another beer. And that's when Mike reminded me that it was about time to get back to work. All that grain we put in, it's time to take it out. Ah. Then we get a beer in the tasting room. So I can't bring the beer, can I? No. Nope. Well, um, arms up. It's going to be a crooked grain in there, I don't know. So in the mash tun, we have all that grain we put in there, and we've extracted all its delicious sugars, and we're boiling that in the kettle. Now we're done with this, yep. but it's still usable, plenty of calories, still some residual sugar, makes perfect animal feed. Get the hoe. Okay. So that's it, literally. No. So you just scoop it. Oh. On your way in, I don't know if you saw a cow shake corner. We missed it on the way in, but you could be damn sure we caught it on the way out. What is uh, Cowshit Corner? Cowshit Corner is the largest dairy farm in Lincoln County. Wow. It is right up the road. They're close friends of ours. Uh, we can't fit tractor trailers on the property. We have a dirt road here. So anything that comes tractor trailer, we offload up that Cowshit Corner. And the beautiful thing with these bins is we'll just put it right at the end of the loading dock. Yep. The farm's only a quarter mile away. He comes with his tractor, picks it up with a, with a tractor, and drives it right over. Right? And that's amazing. Goes right to the cows. That's pretty easy. So the cows and the pigs like it. Is it edible? Could you eat it? Yeah, let's try some. Really? Yeah. You just eat it? Yeah. It's like oatmeal. It tastes like oatmeal? It's hot. But it's a nice warm meal. You guys don't need to make breakfast. You just wait till the mash out and just eat your breakfast. We usually have it when all the sugar's still in there. Oh, so good call. That's smart. <laughs> you got any maple syrup around here or something? It'd be perfect. Use that honey. Yeah, Put this on the yeah, honey. Yeah, yeah. Breakfast I'm going back in a second. But as Mike reminded me, the mash tun's not empty until the mash tun is empty. All right, I think I got most of it. Yeah, that'll do. Good job. Right. Well, Good job. So uh, now what do we do with it? Oh, we have to put it on the loading dock for the farmers. All right. All right. That should do it. Cool. If I lose this over the side and I go with it, it's been fun. <laughs> There you go. Perfect. It's like that. It's like you've done it before. It's like I've done it before. I'm just, you know, I'm a quick learner, right? I don't know if you know that. It's amazing. So then they just haul it away and you do yeah. it again. They bring the tractor, pick it up, and off to the next batch. That's a pretty symbiotic relationship right there. It's great. Well, you know, the farmer gets to take away some, some awesome grain today. You know, I, I think for my, my labor, I should probably take away a little bit of beer. Can we go drink some? Yeah, I think you earned one. Okay, all right, just one. That's good. <laughs> well, let's go check out your tasting room. Let's go. Let's do it. Bye, Grain. The last stop on the farm tour is the tasting room, which I had learned earlier that day was made from boards hewn from the very land. The tasting room is a warm and inviting beer destination for many a traveler. Welcome! Hello! And as Mike Hi, filled everyone. me in, it had changed quite a bit from Oxbow's early days. This is amazing. So this this was was this build this was the shed this used to be the shed down there was the shed down there was and the this shed. was the office this was the office yep. I didn't, wow and we were running the uh, again running samples just out of the brewery we only had three taps and only on Fridays for what four hours wow and that was it one day a week and now you ladies are here this is amazing can I get a beer absolutely we that's why we're here I love it you what earned it. You like? You know, I just, I love the farmhouse. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stick with the farmhouse. So you, you have beer on tap, and then you also have beers in bottles that you can drink here or to go? or Both, yeah. No Both kidding. or either, yes. Both or either, I love it. Yep, so you come here, you can also fill growlers to go. Awesome. Um, and yeah, our, our selection changes quite you, rapidly. Uh, we always keep you on your toes, but there's always something new to try every time you come here. Do you have a certain amount of beers that you try to keep on uh, a tap on a regular basis, or...? We always try to keep at least five, um, okay. but and with our bottles, it usually is seven or eight beers that gotcha. you can try while you're here. Yeah, I think I'll join you in a beer. Yeah, please, let's get a beer. Mike, thank you so much for showing me around this beautiful property, sharing your beer with me. I know later we're going to meet up at the Portland Tasting Room. To That's check right. out the blending, check out some barrels, maybe pull some nails. Yeah, I'll get maybe. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. So. All right, I won't push it. Thank All you right. so much. Cheers. 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 Thanks for thank coming. You. Thanks for coming, bro. 
Oxbow had definitely proven itself to be a true American farmhouse brewery that day. There was no doubt that they put their land and their lifestyle into the beer to create something truly unique. It was time now to head out past Cowshit Corner and check out the urban side of this operation, Oxbow's tasting room and blendery in Portland, where I hope Mike would give me an insight into their alchemy. But first, it's time for another round. plus beers on draft. Most of them are from local breweries. Portland, all around the state. If you want main microbrews, the Great Las Bear is the place to be. Oxbow might be keeping things local in their farm operations, but founder Tim Adams is going global for his inspirations. I got a chance to sit down with Tim and Italian brewer Giovanni Campari in the Oxbow Blendery to taste and talk about a couple of incredible international collaborations between the brewers. With similar approach to brewing yep. and uh, similar philosophies and like-mindedness, and so we talked about putting putting a project together. Giovanni came over. Last, uh, July. last, last July. July. Yep. Yeah, we and, uh, this. We were uh, having dinner at uh, uh, Eventide. Right? Eventide, yeah. And uh, we were uh, enjoying some uh, oysters and uh, and uh, lobsters eventually. And we we decided to use some typical ingredients from uh, from 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 this place. We we say what why don't you brew a uh, a beer using maybe lobsters? Which is the <laughs> of course. Most typical. Of course, you would brew beer with lobsters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this idea certainly came from Giovanni. <laughs> yeah, we definitely made it up as we went along because there's no information available on brewing lobsters. <laughs> this was kind of a new, a new thing that we started on together. I, I strongly uh, believe in the taste and uh, also in, uh, in our job. We are blenders, also not only brewers, but really yep. blenders. Mm -hmm. As in this beer, the uh, lobster taste is very subtle, but it's there. You can get it. I tell you, I, I get that really salt somebody's. brininess, but the, yes. it's very subtle, it's cool. Well, we also salted the beer. We were, you know, that was part of the initial intention of the brew. Okay. Before we got to the lobster part, was to do something with salt. So we were at dinner, and we told the Eventide guys that were brewing this beer, they went to the kitchen, brought us a nice big tub of some uh, some sea salt. Oh, nice, And man. that went right into the beer as well, wow. per, per Giovanni's calculations. But now we've got the salting secrets, so maybe we'll yeah, do some more secrets. salted beers. Yeah. <laughs> I get to try another Oxbow and Pervicino del Ducato uh, collaboration. Can you guys tell me a little bit more about that? We wanted to brew something related with wine. And uh, I had some um, used uh, Brunello di Montalcino, oh, wow. used barrels. And we wanted to, uh, to make a beer to be fermented and engaging in those barrels. So we made an Oud Bruin that we named. Oud Brunello. Oud Brunello. <laughs> Old Brunella. Well, I tell you what, I was fortunate enough to just by happenstance be there at that time, and one of your amazing teammates, uh, Filippo, Filippo yeah. was, was said, "We have this. It, we just we just opened it. We just do you want some?" And I'm like, "Yes, I want some." And I just thought that was so cool that one of my favorite main brewers happened to be in this really awesome brewer in, in Italy, and I'm getting to drink a main brewer collaboration in, in this beautiful spot. And yeah, and I'm jealous because you got to try the beer. Oh my god. Cheers. Cheers. Absolutely. Thanks for documenting. Absolutely. Yeah. Cheers. More great beer between you guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 After that conversation, it was pretty clear there's some amazing things coming out of this building. So maybe change your clothes. This is, this is City Mike. This is City Mike. I love it. I love it. Welcome to Portland. This is a beautiful space. I love it. So from one beautiful space to another. Tell me about these beautiful barrels sitting here in this gorgeous yes. spot. So you saw how small the space is in Newcastle. Here's quite the opposite. We have a lot of space to work with, and a lot of our beers take a very long time to make. And this space gives us room to really 
set it and, and forget it. So it was brewing up in Newcastle and blending down around Portland. Now I was hoping to get a short masterclass from Mike on Oxbow's phenomenal blending techniques. Let's go check it out. Can you show me some of this? Yeah. this? Can we go through these awesome like saloon, like saloon doors? I love it. <laughs> oh man, look at all these vessels. This is so cool. So we have barrels here and we have, what are these bad boys right here? Oh, you wonder how we get all the beer from Newcastle down to Portland. Oxbow transports their beer to Portland from the brewery in Newcastle by loading these tanks onto a box truck and shuttling them to the blendery for distribution. How long do they live in the barrel? Typically eight month minimum up to three years, but it depends on the beer. And what determines the age, like what? Uh, the different microbes we're using, the wild yeast strains, the souring bacteria. I had to get Mike to tell me why oak was so popular for barreling. Oak is just such a great harborer of those microorganisms because they can live in the wood. It's very porous. It allows a little bit of air flow to come through because the wood breathes and that actually keeps the wild yeast alive. So over this long period, you know, a year, two, three years down the road, that beer is evolving in that wood. It's not just taking on oak tannins, it's also um, getting flavor from the wild yeast. It's amazing. How do you know when it's ready to go? Is it just your taste buds? Is it you uh, going, all right? We have, we have an awesome production team. We all get in on tasting days. Awesome. We'll pull nails and taste some different barrels. And definitely a group effort. Sounds like a tough business meeting. What are, they, what are, you, what are you doing with these guys? Are they... uh, so these are blending tanks. And this is a vessel we're able to fit all those different barrels together gotcha. and let them those flavors marry. And then from there, we'll bottle out of, out of these tanks here. Gotcha. Now, does all the beer you make go into the barrels? The only thing from our regular lineup that really makes uh, into barrels is the Farmhouse Pale Ale. We do a, a bottled version that is barrel-aged. Interesting. And that gets barrel-aged into American oak barrels, red wine barrels, and white wine barrels, and then blend it all together. Wow. That's where these tanks really come in handy. And you have those different barrels you're pulling from. Gotcha. And then you're able to blend them together. They, achieve a really diverse flavor profile and depth of character. Gotcha. Well, I had definitely seen a lot of depth of character around here today, and I knew that Oxbow was a self-distributor. So I wanted to hear about their decision to take on that extra work. We don't make a lot of beer. We're very small, and we wanted to have full control over which accounts get the beers and, and also deliver it with a very personal touch. An account that wants to pour Oxbow, they get to know us on a personal level. They don't have to go through a third party. You call us, we're in, we're in there either same day or the next day, so there's a little bit of a speed convenience factor to it. No doubt Oxbow had settled in as a member of the community in Portland. The huge space they had for their blendery allowed them to host events in addition to just the everyday awesome tasting room they had open. The place was covered in art by their in-house artist Will Sears, and as a nice little touch, they had oysters there every Tuesday from up around the coast. But it was time to shoot for the gold with my next question for Mike. Are there any of these these barrels here that you you might want to test? Oh, ho, ho, ho. I, mean, I feel like so. there's some due diligence there that you know I, I'm just keeping you honest. But. You put in some work today, so we <laughs> might have to reward such work with uh, seeing what's going on. I love it. Let's go take a look at some of these barrels. All right. That was it. I was going to get to pull some nails. It was time for a little business meeting. But first, it's time for another round. Norway Brewing Company, a family-owned microbrewery off Route 26 in Norway, Maine. With a family-friendly taproom open year-round and a spacious beer garden during the warmer months, they serve a delicious house-brewed beer and great food made from scratch and with local ingredients. Open seven days a week and with food Wednesday through Sunday. That was it. I was going to get to pull some nails. So I'm going to hold this right here and I'm going to catch it. All right. Bam. How much, how much did I do? Enough to taste. Okay, cool. Yeah, there you go. I don't want to waste the drop. Nope, right. just the taste. All right, perfect. Let's do it. Uh, it's just a nail. Yeah. Just pulling the nail. And what is this beer that, I'm, that we're looking at right here? Oh, this, is, this is the base beer for Synthesis. Synthesis. Yeah, which is a bottle product we put out, and it's uh, as the name suggests, it's a big blend of quite a few different components. It actually has seven different beers seven in it. Different and this beers. is a majority 
base that we do. This beer does not get released on its own. Okay. We make this just as the base component so that we can make synthesis. Gotcha. This is, this is an element that will go into the blending process. Exactly. Of seven beers, wow. I'm gonna taste it. So you're holding it there. I gotta hold it the right way. Hold on there. Yeah. My game, my, my tasting game. Wow, that's amazing. So very tart. Yeah. Sour on the on the palate. Now, when you blend this, when the goal, when you blend it with the other beers, is the goal to maybe pull out, pull a little bit more tartness in to just make it smooth. Or this base tartness is this kind of what you're going for? This base tartness is what we're going for, gotcha. and you'll notice how very easily drinkable it is and smooth. This is a pretty big, strong beer. This is eight and a half percent. Oh wow! So what happens when the acidity develops? You lose a little body. So in the blending process, we're looking to build that body and depth into it. This is a little one-dimensional, um, which is good. This is exactly what we're going That's what for. You I'm want. actually very happy with how it's tasting right wonderful, now. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, but in the blending process, we want to add complexity and add gotcha. layers of flavor to it. So that's really where the alchemy comes in together, where yep. you get to really kind of play with those those elements yep. to make that finished product. Wow. Absolutely. Think of a painter with different colors and you blend them together to make a new color. Well, this color's tasting pretty good right now. Yeah. Man. I appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers. And that was it. I got to get the inside scoop on the blending at Oxbow Brewing Company. Even got to pull some nails. It had been a wonderful day. I got to see how Oxbow really walked the walk when it came to their farmhouse lifestyle, and how they used their footprint on the land to create unique beers for their customers, and how they brought it all home by being a welcoming and kick-ass member of the community in both Newcastle and Portland. The only thing left was to spend some quality time in the tasting room there, kicking a couple back. Cheers! Cheers. Cheers.